So welcome to this video on series RLC AC theory using rectangular complex numbers as the method. We're going to find reactances, the impedance, the series current, voltages and the phase angle. So we've got our series RLC circuit with a resistor of 220 ohms, an inductor of 318.3 millihenries and a capacitor of 6.3662 microfarads a supply voltage of 100 volts at 50 hertz. So the first thing we'll do is find the inductive reactance, which is omega L or 2 pi FL. So that's 2 pi times 50 hertz times 0.3183 henrys. And that is 100 ohms. Then we'll find the capacitive reactance, which is one over omega C or one over two pi FC. And that's one over two pi times 50 Hertz times 6.3662 times 10 to the minus six farads. And that gives us 500 ohms for the capacitive reactance. The resistor is just 220 ohms. It's worth remembering on the argon diagram that the resistance lives on the real axis and has no imaginary part. And the inductor lives on the imaginary positive J axis and has no real part. And the capacitor lives on the negative J part of the J axis and has no real part either. It makes it easy when we're combining them. The voltage across the inductor is 90 degrees in front of the series current and the voltage across the capacitor lags the current by 90 degrees. And the voltages for the inductor and capacitor are in antiphase, 180 degrees out of phase. So R is 220 plus 0J ohms. XL is 0 plus 100J ohms, so it's purely imaginary, and XC is 0 take away 500J ohms. So to find the total impedance, because it's a series circuit, we just add the impedances. So we've got ZR plus ZL plus ZC. So technically, the resistance is just a resistance and the reactance is just the imaginary part, but we can call them impedances. So we've got 220 plus 0J plus 0 plus 100J and 0 minus 500J when we combined all of the components together. Add the real parts together and add the imaginary parts together and we get the total impedance is 220 take away 400 J ohms or minus 400 J ohms. The supply voltage is 100 volts at 50 Hertz, but it will lead or lag the current because the reactances are not equal. So the phase angle is 10 to the minus one of the difference in the reactances divided by the resistance. We need to work this out so that we can find out what the supply voltage is in rectangular form. So the phase angle is minus 61.19 degrees. So the supply voltage lags the series current. So we need to convert the supply voltage into a rectangular form. The real part will be 100 times the cosine of the phase angle. And the imaginary part will be 100 times the sine of the phase angle. We can just do this on a calculator using the rec function. So we put in the polar modulus or 100 volts and then we put in the phase angle and it gives us the real and imaginary parts of the supply voltage, which we could have just got by multiplying out that sine and cos above. So it's 48.19 minus 
0.622 J volts. That's a rectangular form of the supply voltage. And this is the triangle that just shows it's the same triangle whether we use impedance or voltage. So we need to find the current through Ohm's law, I is V over Z. So the using complex numbers, we're doing the voltage 48.19 minus 87.622 J volts divided by the impedance, which is 220, take away 400 J ohms. To do this, we cannot divide by a complex number, only a real number. So we multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator, and we end up with a real denominator overall. We use expanding brackets, binomial expansion. So we start off by doing first outer, inner and last for the numerator and the denominator. So the first two terms, will be 48.19 times 220. And that is purely real because there are no J parts. Then 48.19 times 400 J. And that will be an imaginary part. Then the inner terms, we've got minus 87.622 J times 220, which will give us an imaginary part. And finally, we multiply the two imaginary parts. So we've got minus 87.622J times 400J. And that will give us a real number because J times J is J squared, which is minus one. So the first two terms would be 10,601.8. The next product, is 19,276 J. Don't forget the J or it will all mess up. The third product on the numerator is minus 87.622 J times 220, which will be an imaginary number. So minus 19,000 276.84 J. And finally, we multiply minus 87.622 J by 400 J. The first two numbers multiplied would give us a negative number of minus 35,048.8. That is negative, but we're multiplying by j squared, which is equal to minus one. So what that does, minus a number times minus one, just gives us the positive version of that number. So we change it to positive and the j squared is now gone. Now we add the real parts together. And that is 45,000. 650.6, which is the real part. Then we add the two imaginary parts and they're very similar in size. So when we take one from the other, it's going to be close to zero J. So it's minus 0.84 J. And now we can divide that by the denominator. So we need to work out the denominator. 220 minus 400 J multiplied by the conjugate, which is 220 plus 400 J. We just use expanding brackets again. So the first two terms will be 220 times 220, which is 220 squared. Then the outer terms will be 400 J times 220. That's the outer terms. Then the inner terms multiplied 
will be the negative version of that, which is minus 400j times 220. So these are equal and opposite and will cancel each other out. And then finally, we have minus 400 times plus 400, which will be minus 400 squared multiplied by j squared. So this will always become plus 400 squared. So the denominator is just 220 squared plus 400 squared. We now have a real denominator that we can divide by. So the j terms are equal and opposite. So when we add them, they disappear because they become zero. So 220 squared plus 400 squared is 208,400, which is our denominator. So the current is equal to 45,650.6 minus 0.84j all over 208,400. So we just divide 45,650.6 by 208,400. And that gives us around 219 milliamps. And then we divide the imaginary part by 208,400. And that gives us, due to rounding, that is just zero. So there is no imaginary part, it's just zero J. And that shows us that the series current has no phase shift. So it is in phase with the series resistor voltage. So it's real, it has no imaginary part, so there's no phase shift for the current, so it lives on the x-axis. Now Ohm's law to multiply out the current by the resistance gives us 48.19 volts, the resistor voltage. The inductor voltage is the current times the inductor impedance or reactance, which is zero plus 100 J ohms. And that gives us 21.91 J volts, which means it's 21.9 volts roughly, and it is 90 degrees ahead of the series current. Same for the capacitor, current times impedance or reactance. It is minus 109.53 J volts. That means it's 109.53 volts long and it is 90 degrees behind the series current. The phase difference is 10 to the minus 1 of the differences in the voltages, so VL minus VC over VR. And that works out to be minus 61.19 degrees when we use the voltages as above. So it all checks out. So we can test our results on multi-sim. Instead of 100 volts, I've multiplied it by the square root of 2 so that all of the voltage probes, which would show RMS, actually show the peak values, which is what we worked out. So you can see all the voltages are the same as we calculated. Now what we can do is press pause, go on the grapher and find the phase angle. So I'll press pause on the simulation, don't press stop. Then click grapher, scroll down and click zoom all. And you may want to add some x-axis cursors. I'm going to go from 50 milliseconds to a little bit after that. 70 milliseconds to show one cycle. VS is in green, the supply voltage VR is in blue. So the resistor voltage and the series current lead the supply voltage. And we want to try and get each cursor as close to zero when they cross the x-axis so we can compare the difference in time between them. And using that time difference, it says minus 3.4 roughly milliseconds 
we can convert that to angle to find the phase angle. So we have minus 3.4021 milliseconds times 360 degrees in a circle divided by the period, which is 20 milliseconds at 50 hertz. And we have minus 61.2 degrees, which is pretty close comparing we're observing it on an oscilloscope. So we've used complex numbers to work out all of our series RLC calculations and thanks so much for watching.